This is Star Talk. We're looking for Cardassia. We're looking for Bajor, all these wonderful places that supposedly exist. And let me ask you the following. If we find them, how will we know that they are habitable? What is the classification? Andrew, how do we know something is a world where actually there's something? Never mind the, the you know, sort of fictional way of saying, oh, anything can live anywhere, right? Which is true, but non-fictionally, what right. do we need to look for to make sure that life actually can live somewhere on a planet? Well, right now, one of the big um, criteria out there that scientists use is looking at this habitable zone around a star, right? So this is uh, what we affectionately call the Goldilocks Goldie. zone, right? It's not too hot, not too cold, and uh, on the surface of a planet, uh, that is uh, meaning that uh, how far away it is from its parent star. So uh, in terms of liquid water being uh, able to exist on the surface. So if, it, if the planet would be too far away from its parent star, then the water would uh, basically freeze out on the, on the planet, right? So this most recent discovery of Proxima b, right? Those of you who've heard this, Proxima Centauri is uh, probably the closest star to us, a mere four and a quarter or so light years away from Earth. Uh, most recent studies, after literally decades of people trying to find a planet around there, seem to suggest that there is a planet there maybe one to two times the mass of our planet orbiting in what we might consider that habitable zone. Is there life there? I, at this point, I don't think we can, we can just, it's speculation, right? Okay. And we haven't really, we have to remember, we haven't actually observed the planet. We haven't actually directly imaged this planet. We're, we're, we're detecting the, the effect that the planet has on its parent star, right? In this case, we're looking at wobbles of the star because as planets go around their host star, the star actually ends up wobbling because of the gravitational pull and tug of, that, of those planets. And what's amazing is that we have such exquisitely sensitive enough instruments today that we can actually take those wobbles, measure them, and, and understand like what, how many planets are orbiting around that star, what their masses are. But to take it to the next level is what I think would, be, would really take is understand like does it have an atmosphere? We know that it's one to, two, like in Proxima b uh, case, we know that it's one to two times the mass of the Earth. And with our understanding of planetary physics, we think that it's a, it's a, it's a rocky terrestrial type planet. So it has a rocky surface, someplace solid we could land on, right? But uh, does it have an atmosphere, for instance? <laughs> we don't know that. Summer, how do we find out whether there's atmospheres around other planets? Is there a technique or techniques that actually will give us that scientific handle on whether there's gas surrounding a planet? Yeah, absolutely, but um, it requires a chance alignment because, so the method that Andrew's talking about is making use of this wobble, um, but there's another method that's called the transit method, which is when the star actually goes, sorry, the planet goes in front of the star and blocks the star's light from us, and we see a dip in that star's light. Um, but that can only happen if, you know, that, uh, solar system is in line with our point of view. Um, and in theory, the stars and all of their potential planets are in random um, directions from us. So not every star is gonna have um, its planets going between us and them. But when they do, the cool thing is that you can actually monitor the star's light not just the brightness, but actually the content of that starlight, the metallicity, sort of the spectrum of that star, what type of elements it has. And when the planet goes in front of it, if there's an atmosphere, some of that light goes through the planet's atmosphere. And then that changes what the starlight that we record is. And we can subtract one from the other because when the planet goes around the back of the star, then that signal goes away. So you can figure out what the atmosphere of that planet, what um, elements it's likely to have. And Chuck, what would you do if you found a comedy club on Proxima B? I probably uh, would make sure they have air first. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, and then maybe I might take a booking. <laughs> you know. The first ever stand up in space. Andrew, you had something else to add on first? Yeah, I, I just think that I'm so excited when I hear that. The idea of being able to have this, um, this uh, chemical fingerprint 
of the atmosphere, because let's take that to the next step. If we could actually detect the chemistry of an atmosphere, of an exoplanet, we, and we could tell what, what's there. Imagine if we found things like methane or uh, you know, wait, oxygen. Wait, wait, methane is like cow farts. Uh -huh. Why would I be uh, excited about finding cow farts? Because uh -huh. cows are on the planet. Exactly. Oh, well, cows. I mean, come right. on. It's also, out, the, right. it's also the funniest planet, let's be clear. <laughs> farts do make everything funnier, right? Just <laughs> ask Dr. I mean, Nina it's, Stroming. It's just a rule. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Think about it. It's a, potentially a sign of life, right? Potentially. Uh, and uh, or things like chlorophyll. Hmm, that wouldn't that be interesting? Or how about uh, greenhouse gases or something like that? So there could be some very interesting findings that could indicate very clearly that there would potentially be life on these planets. Wonderful. Can I just say that I think it's really funny that the nearest star to us is the one that took us so long to find a planet around. It's kind of like when you're like looking for your glasses and you can't find them and they're on your head. That is an excellent <laughs> point. Yeah, no, I think that's a very good point. Sometimes the most difficult things to find are the things that are right nearby, but faint. That's Proxima B, you were there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, isn't there a song from the 1980s like that? The search is over. You were with me all the while. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs>